Hello, did you ever hear of that thing called a Christmas tinner? Effectively, it is a Christmas dinner tin with nine layers of foodie festive goodness. If you looked at that closely, there are some questionable things in there, including scrambled egg and bacon on the top. Why are there not pigs and blankets? There's pigs and blankets on the actual label of the tin. Effectively though, the concept is that you've got an entire Christmas dinner in a tin with the Christmas pudding at the bottom, which makes complete sense, but mince pies underneath the scrambled egg right at the top. I'm just, now I've been meaning to do this for several years and it turns out one year there was even a vegetarian option. However, is it actually legit? I could try my best to explain it, but the lovely chaps at Did You Know Gaming have very kindly let me insert a brief clip from their extremely interesting, much longer video about the Christmas Tinner. Launched originally in December 2013, the Christmas Tinner was a spoof food product from Game. The premise was that this was Christmas dinner in a can for gamers, nine layers of festive goodness squashed into a single tin. Can't spare even 10 minutes of gaming time to eat a Christmas meal for your family, you socially inept wretch? Well, game has just the thing for you. Some say it was just a marketing stunt, others claim to have genuinely owned one. The further I looked into this, the more I saw how little consensus there was in the matter, and what revealed itself to me was a mystery with as many layers as the product in question. It's pretty interesting, right? And clever. For me, it's a little bit like the clear ketchup. I want to bring something to life that really isn't a thing and doesn't exist, so I want to make it reality, even though it really shouldn't be. Are you ready for a story? Welcome to my day yesterday. I headed off to the local supermarket to grab some tin beans. When the Christmas tinner was originally created, tin cans were typically around about 500 grams. The biggest tin I could get, which was those baked beans, was 415 grams. No other tin had any bigger size. Looks like baked beans for lunch. To help me make a mold to make it shape easier, I headed to my garage, got out my angle grinder, and cut the tin can in half. Turns out cutting it in half was actually the easiest thing to do, but filing it and cleaning it to make it safe was way harder and took much, much longer. But with it taped together, we had our mold ready for layer one, Christmas pudding. For the Christmas pudding, I got a Christmas pudding that we already had in the house that we were due to eat on Christmas day. Shoved it into the bottom, uh, pressing it down to try and level it off. Layer one, done. Layer two, roast carrots and parsnips. Uh, I did honey roast carrots and parsnips, so after peeling my veg, I parboiled it slightly in water just to soften it up, gave it a good old drizzle of honey, and then roasted it in the oven until it was bubbling away, all nice and charred. <laughs> honey roast, parsnips and carrots, glorified baby food. Oh. I'm a happy big baby right now. And down it went on top of the Christmas pudding. Deary me. Layer three. Brussels sprouts mixed with stuffing. So for the sprouts, I just prepped them and chopped them as normal and gave them a nice little parboil to soften them up. Already had some stuffing mix, kind of hacked up the sprouts and stuffing together. Down that layer went, and that's already three layers of pretty quirky food, but individually, probably rather tasty. Oh my gosh, layer four. Cranberry sauce, this was super easy. All I had to do was pop the seal. And I just dollop that down on top because when it's cold, it is like a jelly as we saw right at the start. Bread sauce next, which I just made uh, in a saucepan. Now this is kind of loose with milk. So what I decided to do was get some uh, gelatin sheets. They kind of look like these funky transparent playing cards. Soaked them in water, which kind of helps to loosen them up and get them ready. Now four of these would set a pint of fluid. I've got half of that and two of these. In other words, we might end up with some white jelly. Dropped them into the bread sauce, warmed it through to melt it all in, and I spooned that on top of the cranberry sauce. Yeah, I'm really worried about that gravy layer seeping through there. So much so that for the next layer gravy, I did exactly the same. So I had gravy in a pan, got some more gelatin sheets, shoved that in there. Wanted to see how firm this gravy is gonna be. So I poured a small amount into this little glass tub. And if I just tip that at 92 degrees, oh my gosh, look. It's not moving. This took a very long time to cool down, which made me lose quite a lot of light here in the kitchen. But by the time it did cool down, it was poured straight on top. And that was a lovely gummy layer. Folks, it's a bit of a disaster. And to add to it, my fridge is flashing. Hang on. Uh, some of the gravy has spilt out. Um, maybe I should have uh, covered more tape on the tin, but it looks to have firmed up now and plugged the gap. Uh, my only fear is it's probably run down the rest of the tin now, but we might be able to get around that. Next layer. 
roast potatoes and turkey. So I roasted some potatoes in the oven till they came out charred. I am so hungry now. Had some cooked turkey meat, shoved it with the potatoes and whizzed it all together. All of a sudden it became this weird turkey roast potato mass. You could fry that. That would make an amazing sort of weird like turkey potato burger. Well, let's do it now. See, this for me is where it gets a little bit weird. We now switch back to dessert of mince pies, which obviously are pastry and mince meat together. I'm really not so sure because it looks like a darker layer. The mince meat alone is rather sticky. However, if you bond it together with the pastry in place, the pastry will help thicken it. I can't really think of any other way to do this other than to just do it with my hands. It actually turned, again, quite like the turkey and roast potato combo, fairly moldable. I think that's gonna be our mince pie layer. That went straight in. The final layer to me didn't make any sense. I don't, I've never had a, a Christmas dinner with scrambled egg. Okay, I just I do not get this whatsoever. There are, I mean, maybe you've got some suggestions what could go in there, but I think pigs and blankets would be amazing. And it didn't help things that I decided to get a little bit crazy with it. So I got some eggs, whisked them all together with a little bit of milk and had some cooked bacon that I just chopped up for our bacon and egg layer. I could have made scrambled egg. I could have done it on a pan, but I had that spare tin and I thought, ooh, so. I've got some water just coming to a boil and I'm sterilizing that other tin, completely cleaning it out because we are gonna submerge and cook the egg in that other tin using it as a mold. Oh no, it's floating. Oh, it's blooming floating. You're a wizard, Barry. Is that the most efficient way of doing it? Probably not. Is it gonna work? Probably not. I feel with all this craziness going on, now's a good time to show you. My mum dropped this uh, certificate in the other day. That is my GCSEs. Uh, I did terrible with my GCSEs, folks. Do your best. Um, Phoebe's actually doing hers this year. I just said to her, just do your best. I attended the University of Life in the end and everything's worked out okay so far. But I got an E, an actual E in home economics cooking. I loved it. And I don't know why I got, I got an E. When I posted that as well on Twitter, people were like, yeah, yeah, I got an E in maths and now I'm an accountant. <laughs> Right, and a physics lesson now. Oh my gosh! Ugh. Oh my gosh, look, it's, it's firmed up. Can you see that? No, it's steaming the camera up, but it has set enough where it's now not moving much. This is good. Yeah, that well-known cooking phrase, I'm hoping I can sandcastle this. Oh no, I'm gonna answer the doorbell. Ugh. Ugh. So I tried again. I'm using a mixing bowl this time and that's sitting perfectly flush in the tin, working well. Well, that one failed because I didn't grease it and there was already residue of egg already in there. So it was just doing its thing and just disintegrated. So we stuck with our first one, which just sat on there like some weird egg ice hockey puck. Squishing it down and it just about worked. And you know what? I'm quite happy with the way that worked by putting some cling film on it. I put it in the freezer and my idea was to fuse it together overnight until this very point. Like the bit now where I'm talking. That I should be getting it out of the freezer now, but I didn't. All right, I walked Boston. Mrs. B said to me, hang on a sec. If you let it thaw out in the morning, we'll still be letting it thaw now for hours. So last night we carried on a bit more. So I'm just gonna cover the turkey and potato in flour a minute. I'm just way too invested in this right now. Anyhow, in between the freezing, I forgot to say, with the help of my friend Zed, who's a fellow YouTuber, does Minecraft videos, we're doing a collaboration together uh, very, very soon. Keep an eye out for that. We went to see a familiar friend. Uh, Matt has come up chumps again. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> yeah, baby. Looks like a roast potato, doesn't it? That is good. It reminds me of a turkey crab cake. Anyhow, uh, back to last night. My plan was to freeze it, to bond it all together as one big tin can shape and then brush it with gelatin to give it that real jellified look. But getting it out of the tin, I was actually pleasantly surprised with that structure there. Now, although this tin came in handy to make the scrambled egg or perhaps more of the uh, stamper mold or cutter thing, there is a ridge on the top of the can. So my plan to drop the frozen mold into this was not gonna work unless I filed off that. And I just didn't wanna do any more of that. So I actually ended up last night going out and getting a third tin of beans and I kept the top half on but took off the bottom so that I could slide the can on top. It pushed out some of the ingredients, but we got it in the tin. We could put the cap back on the bottom and tape it in place and then stick it in the fridge so it can slowly defrost overnight, which is where 
we're at now. So, all being well, we've effectively got a Christmas dinner in a can. <laughs> yes! I got this printed at the place that does my tax returns. They're not a printer, so they don't have a like, high glossy paper, but I think, do you know what? That will do, donkey. That will do. Boom! So before I eat this, I am gonna let it come up to room temperature slightly from the fridge. I was mulling over warming it up, but I think it could all like mingle all the layers together, the gelatin could seep and all that kind of stuff. Taking it in and out of the tin loads of times just doesn't feel like the right idea to do, you know? The other thing I wanna say is if this was warmed, mashed together and put into like some sort of posh brioche bun, I think it would be quite nice. However, room temperature like this, yeah. Before I'm joined by a special guest, don't forget to consider subscribing if you're not already for regular food fun. If you are, make sure your notifications are turned on. And thanks so much for the support. Thank you to Matt for the label. Thanks to Zed for help with the label. Also, thanks to the guys at Did You Know Gaming for the amazing information about the Christmas dinner. Such a good video. And as for me, ho, ho, oh dear. Folks, I am joined by the power of technology. Hi, Stuart. Hello, Barry. I'm, I'm good, yeah. I'm sorry I didn't drive to Norwich. It's quite a long way and I wasn't sure <laughs> how well this would travel. It for one tin, but my God, what a tin! I don't know if it shouldn't have been done or couldn't be done, but you've done it. Okay, so we've got our omelette top. So actually, if I just give it a little bit of force and just push it out, there we go. Oh, look at this. Oh my God! you bloody done it, Barry. Eh? you done it, mate. That's actually worked out really well. Oh my gosh. That's astonishing. So how do you eat it? Do you just start at one end or do you take a long slice or what? Yeah, we've got omelette, mince pie, there's like bread sauce, <laughs> gravy, cranberry sauce, turkey and chicken, Brussels sprouts. That is amazing. I mean, it's exactly as I remember it from the adverts, you know. Oh, oh done it, it's done it. I'm going to try and get the whole lot in one big bite. Oh, that's going to be a flavour sensation. Yeah, so much going on here. I'd love to know what the aftertaste is going to be. What is going to be the strongest flavour? It tastes like Christmas. <laughs> oh my gosh. The actual strongest flavour by miles is the mince pie. Wow. Um, and something else. I don't know what that is. There's something else there. <laughs> I can't actually... Yeah, it tastes like... It tastes like Christmas wrapping paper. Oh, lovely. So it kind of went like a buttery pastry thing. No sweetness at all. And then like tasted like paper and then Christmas pudding. So I think my top conclusion with this is it tastes like Christmas pudding. <laughs> I can't believe how well that's come out. It's just exactly right, isn't it? Well, Merry Christmas, Stu. I'll be on the motorway now and drop the other half off to you. Oh, please, yeah. If you can get here in about uh, 20 minutes, I'll be happy. <laughs> well, that was very exciting, wasn't it? Uh, that is it left over in all of its delight, folks. Look at all of those layers. And that cranberry sauce did actually hang in there in the end. I think going in the fridge, as it sort of defrosted, it still went back to its state of being like, well, cranberry sauce, like a jelly and, and held it together. I mean, that's actually, you know, that's quite some high praise from Stu. And he's relieved that he's not got to try this until next year. <laughs> But there we are. Thank you so much to the names on the screen that support the channel on Patreon. Really hope you enjoyed the video. Do let me know down below what you would put in your Christmas dinner. I really want to actually crowdfund a decent one now because we've made that reality. And it ain't too bad if you like Christmas pudding and Christmas wrap. Ciao.